Joining us on set, our international affairs editor, Armin Georgian. Armin, uh, uh, a moving speech by the French president, delivering it also in English. What did you make of his words? Yeah, I, I just have a query. I don't know why he said we are with you in French right at the end rather than in, in, in English. But uh, he was obviously kind of returning the favor of speaking English to uh, the Queen's subjects, if you will, just as she spoke French when she came to France, uh, which she, she did on several visits. Uh, she visited France more than she visited any other European country, and she really flattered her host by speaking absolutely excellent French. Um, as someone of that generation and that upbringing actually did, it was not unusual for someone born in her time to speak such good French. The political elite as well of her time um, spoke excellent French, but nowadays you don't really find that among among younger royals or younger British politicians, but certainly the, the French public uh, appreciated that, loved the fact that she sort of flattered them by, by speaking such good French. Uh, and, you know, I suppose for a lot of French people, as for people around the world who are interested in her, she's the only monarch they ever knew. And being so close to Britain, there was a lot of interest in the royal family, in the press. There isn't exactly a tabloid, the exact equivalent of the tabloid press in, in France, but certainly, um, you know, those that magazines that dealt with sort of celebrities and stuff, they would, you know, definitely focus on her and the royal family quite, quite frequently. Uh, a lot of French people had a, a, an affection for her. Uh, one person that I interviewed just earlier, uh, the who's now actually in, in the government, um, she's the Secretary of State for European Affairs. She uh, met the Queen when she was a student uh, in Britain, which again, you know, just to sort of put in perspective how much there was an exchange between French and British students when it was still, you know, pre-Brexit, easy to have student mobility and so on. Let's take a listen to uh, Laurence Boone uh, speaking to me a bit earlier this morning. She was, at the time, a very kind person, very surprised to see a French person on campus, but that was the very early years of Erasmus program. Yeah. Um, but she and she spoke French, v um, very good French. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and beyond that, I think she's really the pillar, the institutional pillar of the UK. And that that shows, especially in this time where the uh, rule of law is sometimes challenged, how important institutions are. Um, so we're very, very sorry to see her leave us. So you could, I think what we can take away from that, um, that that soundbite there will that certainly the the French you know political class uh, is very aware of of the role that she played in the sort of big scheme of things the uh, the institutional pillar as Laurence uh, Boone said and I think there is a, a realization on this side of the channel that that role of the monarchy is going to continue to be important in fostering links between the two countries despite the very difficult political waters that are now uh, being sort of traversed. I mean, certainly, you know, the, the strains and stresses of Brexit uh, are not going to go away. There are lots of political issues that are going to come back into kind of the central focus once this um, uh, political truce is over, not just in Britain between the political parties, but between uh, Britain and its European neighbours. Once Brexit is back on in everyone's focus, uh, that I think that institutional role that the monarchy plays is going to still be important with, of course, a very different kind of monarch, King Charles III, a uh, very, very different kind of um, of, of f figure and personality to his mother. Yeah, if nothing else, over 70 years, a reassuring presence to always have the same person wearing the crown. Um, King Charles, now the monarch. Um, yeah. What do we know of his interests and what do you think he will be like as a king? Well, he's been very interested in uh, environmental issues, even when uh, it was not really something that is, you know, central to public uh, discourse now. He gave his first uh, big speech in 1970 about the threat of pollution, plastic and 
overpopulation. He himself admitted at, at the time people thought he was, quote, completely potty, unquote, in bringing up this, this kind of topic, uh, not just because he was a royal and it was just not expected for a royal, a royal to speak about such things, but simply because it was not politically the sort of uh, axiomatic theme that it is today in so many countries. And more recently, he's gone on to address very high-level fora on uh, climate change, for example, uh, addressing the European Parliament uh, in 2008, telling MEPs that the doomsday clock of climate change is ticking, calling for the biggest public, private and NGO partnership ever seen. He's spoken at the big COP uh, climate change conferences, COP21, COP26 in Glasgow much more recently, as well as at the G20 in Rome. So really rubbing shoulders with uh, with politicians in a way that you just didn't expect from the royal family in recent times. Uh, he addressed the World Economic Forum in Davos in uh, 2020, asking businesses to move to a more sustainable model. So uh, this is something that is sort of very, as I said, kind of not at all uh, common for a member of the royal family to be so political, to be seen in, in such a political context at these big, you know, headline conferences and international events. So it will be interesting to see uh, how that evolves now that he has actually uh, acceded uh, to the f throne. What sort of emphasis will, will he put? Will he cut back on some of those more sort of political interventions and stick to a more ceremonial institutional role? Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to go forward. But in any case, everyone knows his political views. And, uh, you know, in America, all these things is are seen as essentially a kind of a liberal, a left um, part of the political spectrum, progressive ideas, engagement, uh, and he would certainly be seen as on the progressive wing of American politics. In Europe, the things that he says are not so uh, sort of uh, startling in the sense that they are more in the mainstream that they, than they are in the United States. Well, we'll have to see what path he walks, but either way, he will have big shoes to fill. Thank you, Armin Armin, Thank George you. and Friends Rewards, a foreign editor.